Hey everybody and welcome to today's Fedora 41 release party. So I'm Timothée Ravier, I'm uh, the Fedora Atomic Desktop Maintainer and we're going to talk about what's new and what's next in Fedora 41 for the Fedora Atomic Desktops. So let's start with what's new. So finally, we've got bootupd enabled by default in the Fedora Atomic Desktops. So what this means is that as soon as you are on Fedora 41, you will get bootloader updates enabled by default and applied automatically. So right now it's enabled only for UEFI systems, but it will be enabled for classic BIOS systems soon. So watch out for that. Um, if you have troubles updating older systems and have UEFI, um, uh, UEFI secure boot issues, uh, you can take a look at the link at the bottom here. The next thing that we have, the next major thing that we have in this release is uh, that we are moving and we're making progress to move to our bootable containers. So bootable containers is a new way to do atomic desktops. And um, in this new, this new way of doing things, we're going to include DNF5 and bootc in the, directly in the image, in the container image. So not that right now, the bootable container image are built in the Fedora infra, but unfortunately they're not yet pushed to the container registry. So the ones that you see already on the container registry, uh, the Fedora one, are not yet those the actual bootable container images. So they don't have those commands yet inside. You can track progress on that in this issue and I hope that we'll get this resolved soon. In the meantime, there are unofficial images that I'm building on the side in GitLab CI and publishing on Cradle.io as well, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's take a look at each of our variants and see what's new in each one of them. So the first one is Fedora Silverblue. With Silverblue, we have GNOME 47 release, and um, as, as a major change, and a lot of a collection of other updates uh, that are detailed in the uh, distinct uh, pages and on Fedora magazine for Fedora Workstation. So I'll not go too deep into that. One of the major things that's been included is uh, Texas as the new default terminal uh, from um, Christian Abbott. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's great. It works great with, uh, with Toolbox and, and uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's super useful. Uh, another major change is that uh, we are now uh, we learn only by default. Uh, the X11 session packages are still available in the repo, and you can overlay them if you truly need it. But do give Willan a try. You'll you'll probably see that it works well for you for what you want to do. Next is next is Kinoite. Uh, Kinoite comes with the latest Plasma 6.2 release, the latest frameworks and gear applications. And again, there's a specific dedicated Fedora Magazine article uh, where you can get all the info. Um, along with Fedora Kinoite, we are also introducing Fedora Kinoite Mobile. So right now there are no official images being produced yet, but they are an official one. And so you can give it a try until uh, we make this properly uh, integrated into Fedora. The next one is Sway Atomic um, or Sway Based Edition um, variant. And uh, this one comes with the latest 1.10 Sway release. And we have a collection of uh, small changes. And then finally, the Budget Atomic one. Um, there aren't any major changes in this one um, because the team is mostly spending a lot of time working on supporting Win and properly. And so this is taking a lot of development time. All right, so I'll talk about unofficial bootable container images. Uh, it's those images that I build on the side on GitLab CI and push them to Quero.io. They are available um, on this specific here uh, repos on Quero.io. It's they're built from same sources, same packages as the official one, uh, but they are not technically built on Fedora Infra, so they are unofficial. And uh, but there are a little bit more variants there that are available. So we have an XSE one, uh, and we also adding so this we're introducing the Kinoite mobile one and the Cosmic Atomic one. So those are unofficial images, and we would appreciate if you're interested in uh, jumping in to maintain those uh, to make them proper official images. Uh, then reach out to us and send feedback, test those, and send feedback to the Kiddy and Cosmic Six. I think they will appreciate it. 
one thing of note is that I'm going to remove the older names for Sericea and Onyx, which is like Sway Atomic now and Pudgy Atomic. And so if you're relying on those images, uh, they will be going away soon. So do migrate to new names. I've been pushing them to both names for a while now, and um, uh, so they will be removed soon. It should be a one-line change for you. There are a couple of other smaller changes uh, in uh, for this release. Um, one of those is that we have enabled unprivileged updates. Um, as on Atomic Desktops, updates are fundamentally safe to perform on the system. So we decided to let any active users, so you, have to, you need to be in front of the computer, it need needs to be an active session. Uh, so any active, independent of privileges user can now trigger system update, but that's, that's it, nothing else. You can not even console them, just trigger the update. So it makes it easier to use the system without being admin all the time. And at the same time, we've made some operation uh, via RPM3 uh, a little bit harder to do by mistake. And so if you're an admin user, uh, you will have to have, you will be asked your password uh, if you don't do it via sudo uh, for a few uh, more advanced RPM3 operations. Um, then in the second point, uh, we now have a fix for the alternatives command um, on the systems. Uh, so it's a small command like when you install several, uh, let's say you've got uh, several uh, packages providing the same command line, um, you can switch them using alternatives and this now works properly on the atomic desktops. If you have an older system, you need a small migration step. Uh, it's not yet automated. Uh, we're, we're looking at, at doing that in, in, in the future. And finally, we've added a few packages to the initRD that should make things easier to unlock uh, Lux devices via the TPM. Uh, it's not fully there yet, but it's, it's getting there. It should be easier, at least. All right. Um, then uh, we have our friends at the universe on the universe root project uh, the blue fiend, Basite, Aurora ones. Uh, they are publishing their updates as well. So they are basing the new versions on top of the work that we do in the Atomic desktops. And so you will get the freshest things in Parasite. Um, um, they have what they call GTS uh, version, uh, which is based on the old stable branch of Fedora, so Fedora 40, which has, so they've updated to that. And the latest stable streams for those, for Aurora, Buffin moved also to Fedora 41. So do check them out if you feel like some bits are missing in the default config of the Fedora Atomic desktops. It's where they had all the, the sugar on the cake. Right, so with that said, what's coming next? Well, the first item on the list is making progress toward bootable containers. So we see bootable containers as the next major evolution for the Atomic desktop. And this is where we want to move things forward. Um, so the first step of user is publishing those images and we're working on that. It's, it's, it's been a progress for a while. The next one is going to be the transition to ComposerFS. So ComposerFS is a new way to do uh, the root moon point of the system. It's a new way to mount the image of the system. And uh, it has a lot of advantages. And so we're transitioning to that and uh, we're, we're trying to do that for Fedora 42. And finally, once we're ready, we'll be also moving everybody to using the container image as a transport and a format. And so progressively, we'll be moving everybody to bootable containers. It's not planned yet for a specific release. Uh, so we'll see when we get ready to do that and when things are um, smoothed out and, and, and tested. So you can follow the progress on that front in the roadmap that we have on the OS3 repo uh, where we store all, all of our uh, issue in progress. And uh, yeah, another nice thing uh, that I've been wanting to do for a while and that uh, should hopefully go, uh, that should hopefully progress um, soon is having, instead of having one documentation for every single, for every variant of the Atomic desktops, uh, we should move to a single documentation for all of them and have separate sections in the docs for different desktops. And so I've been doing a little bit of progress on that and hopefully we can get this done in the Fedora 41, 40, 42 cycle and get this up and running so that it makes the experience easier. It's only one place to reference and uh, it would have all the info for all the desktops. 
All right. And now, if you feel like um, if you like how to make desktops, if you feel like uh, you should you want to contribute, then uh, it's 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 always a good time to to join us and and reach out. Um, so you can see all of the details of what I've just presented uh, in much more details and with all the links uh, into the Federal Magazine article at this link. Uh, yeah, you will find the slides. Um, and uh, yeah, you can feel free to reach out to us. We've got a uh, tracker on GitLab, a matrix channel uh, where people are talking. Um, and uh, then like if you're more interested in a specific desktop, you should reach out to the specific SIGs that look for those desktops. Um, whether it's a GNOME one, KDE, Sway, or Apache one. Or if you want to create a new one, do start in the Atomic Desktop channel uh, and reach out. I've made a post on my blog around how to actually make a new variant uh, official. And so you can follow that if you're interested. All right, and that's it for me. Thank you very much. and. Um, Enjoy the rest of the Ferrari 41 release party. Have a good time.